I want to introduce our speakers today. Ken Wilson was featured as our speaker at last year's Wichita Postcard Club show on a Sunday morning. And he talked about a book he had written, Snapshots and Short Notes, Images and Messages of Early 20th Century Photo Postcards. It was a, a wonderful presentation and he did a meeting for us ahead to promote that, uh, that we included as a postcard of the week. Debbie and Ken are uh, <clears throat> longtime members of our club and also uh, founding members and big supporters of the, let me get it right, Capital of Texas Postcard Club in Austin, Texas. They have attended many of our annual shows and have signed up to be here this uh, this October 15 and 16 too. Today, they plan to share with us about their recent trip to England. And uh, along with the mayors who are here, we're just delighted to see Rose Mayor today. She's uh, kind of like my wife, kind of a, a mystery to many people. Uh, but we know that she's right there supporting Jim, who's off at the show having all this good time and she's there at home answering the mail and the phone and keeping it all rolling but uh, we're delighted to have uh, uh, both Jim and uh, Rose Mayer today. They all got together and went to England and uh, uh, that's what our program is about today. Please join me in welcoming Debbie and Ken Wilson from Dripping Springs, Texas. Take it away, guys. Hi, everyone. Uh, hello. Well, um, we're certainly glad that you could join us today. Hal asked us if we would speak about going to postcard fairs in England. And we don't have a ton of experience with that, but uh, we were able to go to the Woking Postcard Fair this year. Uh, with Jim and Rose Mayer, and I told Hal that I'm not sure we had enough postcard fair stories to fill this presentation. So we're going to talk about uh, postcards and searching for other collectibles and connections between people and connections between countries, and uh, just it'll be a little travel log with postcards scattered through it. And you can see there on the screen, I hope that it's also starring Jim and Rose Mayer. Jim Mayer, uh, is, they are from Rock Island, Illinois. And Jim, we have seen at the Wichita show every year for many years, he deals in postal history. So he's looking at postmarks and cancellations and all that sort of thing. And he buys and sells that sort of thing. He has a, a presence online. He also will provide you with books about the uh, history of uh, post postmarks and cancellations, all kinds of interesting things. But we have known Jim for many years and we he, he would talk about Rose and we'd hear about Rose, but he said they were gonna go to the Woking UK postcard show this year. Rose was going too. We said, oh yeah, we gotta go. It was their anniversary. So a big one. we met over there and we met in London and went to the Woking show and did some other um, adventures while we were there. So there we are. Uh, Debbie and I heard about postcard fairs in England from Bill Peterson many years ago. He was a longtime Austin postcard member, club member and dealer. He's no longer with us, but he was a very funny guy. And he was traveling in the 80s and 90s to England to postcard fairs, buying postcards, coming back to sell them here. And it sounded pretty exciting, but I didn't see how you could possibly cover that expense. But Bill and his wife, Patty, always traveled very frugally. They stayed with friends. He would find the best airline deal. And back before the internet, and before eBay, you could buy postcards in other countries and bring them home and, and be able to sell them for a good profit here. Now with the internet, things have kind of smoothed out and it's sort of even. And 
we didn't go to buy for resale, uh, although we do resell a few of the things we buy, but we went for the fun of it to look and uh, to shop postcards. We also shop for other collectibles. We're longtime junkers and collectors of all sorts, as probably many of you are. But there we are in London in the tube. Uh, and that was probably in 2010. There we are uh, that same year at the Bloomsbury Postcard Show. And they had just, uh, I'm sorry, I said postcard show. Hal keeps reminding me it's postcard fair when you're in England. And they had just opened the doors and we just came in and somebody snapped our picture. Uh, that show used to go on once a month in, in uh, Bloomsbury in London, and it's changed a little bit, but you can find all the information mm -hmm. about it online, and it's still periodically happening, and it's a wonderful show. It, it happens every month. I looked it up, checked it out. Um, it happens every month, uh, and it's in the ho um, Holiday Inn Hotel now. But in the and, Bloomsbury neighborhood. Yeah. And we dropped Bill Peterson's name and everybody knew him. Everybody. So that was fun. Next slide, please. There we go. And that's, that's that same show. Uh, that's when we first came in. And as it got a little cr more crowded, uh, one of the things that was interesting about the shows in the UK, as many of you know, they, didn't pro they don't provide as many chairs as we do here. Uh, frequently there would be no chairs. And so if you were gonna look through a box of cards for a half an hour, you were gonna be standing there. Well, from pressure from folks like us and Bill Peterson, little by little, they started providing more chairs. And everyone's getting older. Everyone's getting older. <laughs> uh, it's interesting though, it seems to be a different uh, crowd a little bit over there. The crowd is, uh, uh, older and predominantly male, it seems to me, both in dealers and shoppers uh, in England. And um, we also hit every flea market we can while we're there. That happens to be a, a weekly market in Covent Garden. And at these flea markets, there's not only jewelry and all sorts of little things to look at, but there's always a postcard dealer or two. The, the woman there in the upper right, uh, we met her the first time we went there, and we have seen her at shows um, for the last 12 years. We saw her this year at Woking Show, where she wasn't selling, but she was buying. Debbie sometimes gets tired of me looking <laughs> because I, I want to look at everything in every box. And I want to look at all the people. And so I'm just like taking a break and... Well, one of those is for soup, but um, <laughs> taking a tea break as they do there. Now, just where we were at Covent Garden where she was waiting, I went over to a revolving rack of new postcards and there was this Rick Gary postcard about Jack the Ripper. I was amazed. I, we were all familiar with Rick Gary at Wichita and all the Rick Gary postcards we had seen for years. But I was telling Debbie, look, look, there's a there's a Rick Gary card right here yeah. in London about Jack the Ripper. And I had never seen that card. And I, I was just so surprised to see it there. So we bought 10 of them. We thought, can't wait till we get home. We're going to surprise all those Rick Gary collectors. They won't have this one. Of course, we got home and everybody goes, well, yeah, we got yeah. that, you know. But we hadn't seen it before. And it was exciting to us to have a little touch of home there. Uh, Made at, our world at small. Garden. And it's a wonderful card. I think that's it's different than most Rick Gary's, but I like that card very much. And there's Debbie just shopping at one of the many fairs. There are flea markets every day of the week somewhere in London. And come rain or shine, they're going to be there and you can go. And to us, it's a little bit like collecting postcards. I like postcards for history. And in, in a way, we're looking at people's history here. What did they own? What did they wear? What did they use in their house? And it's just a way of connecting uh, through uh, place and through time. And it's just fun for us. So we don't, we don't buy a lot, but we, we look a lot. 
Okay, this is Portobello Road. By the way, I should stop. I meant to say earlier, uh, for those of you who tuned in who thought every slide was going to be postcards and postcard discussion, I apologize, but it's I hope you're not too uh, unhappy with it. We'll just get into collecting in general. We'll come back to postcards from time to time. Uh, the fellow on the right is Andy Morant. He buys and sells old toy soldiers. He's been doing it for many years. He's on the internet. And I met him in 2010, the first time we went there. Portobello Road is a huge market. It's been going on for many, many years. My mother used to go to Portobello Road and shop for antiques when I was a kid. So I met Andy, and as you can see from looking at him, he laughs every, with every sentence, almost every word. He's always laughing and joking, and he's very funny. And I don't collect toy soldiers, but it was such a pleasure to deal with him. And I was intrigued in what he had. I bought a toy soldier from him every time we saw him at Portobello Road. That's his display. Uh, that's his display this year at Portobello Road, but it hadn't changed much. He is there every Saturday. And imagine unpacking and setting up all of those toy soldiers. And uh, I just wanted to show that I'm always respectful of, of British history and culture and so forth. Uh, when, wherever I travel, I try to be a, a, you know, a, a good American. All right, this year when we went, it happened to be the Queen's Jubilee, her, what Debbie? 70th. 70th, which is? A platinum. Platinum. <laughs> And she was everywhere. She was peeking out of every window and every display play, and they had flags and you could buy souvenirs. And it was, we didn't go to any of the parades. There were just too many people, but we saw some of it on television. And uh, I All sort of- All the little villages we went to, everything was about the- Everybody queen. was decorated. Not just the, London. For the Jubilee. So that was, that was fun. And I did get to meet the queen. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> uh, I, I, earlier, I had my hand on her shoulder, and Debbie told me, no, no, mustn't touch the queen. And Debbie, of course, has always been a queen. That is her portrait that <laughs> hangs in the uh, Museum of London. Yeah. There we are back at Portobello Road on the left. That is my sister Alice in the red jacket. She went with us this year. And uh, Alice and I, it's fun for us to think about our mom shopping there. Our mom sort of dabbled in antiques a little bit and we'd hear all these stories about Portobello Road and it is wall to wall people. Not sure there are any real bargains for dealers there, but there's so much stuff to look at. It's a it's lot exciting. of fun. And on the right is Alice and Debbie going into Hampton Palace, which we got to tour this year. That was fun. All right, and then Jim and Rose showed up and we met them and we, the, we were gonna go to the Woking Postcard Show, but we were gonna go to Brighton. We were gonna do several other things. And it was a real pleasure to meet Rose finally after hearing about her for 20 years or something. So and sweet. she's so sweet and nice and friendly, good sense of humor. So we immediately went to a pub to have a meal. And uh, if you look in the background in the mirror, you'll see my sister in the red jacket snapping our picture. So there we are getting ready to have a good time in merry old England. She was easy, you know, it just was nice. So it was a very, very pleasant time. So it was Jim's idea for us to go to the Woking postcard fair. Uh, I should say that Tony Meager, uh, a dealer that many of you know, who is from Arizona, we see him every year at Wichita. He, he grew up in Woking. He is from Woking, Tony Meager, Arizona. Now, I have to break in here and tell you, uh, it's sort of a dad joke story. I'm sorry. I apologize ahead of time, but the first time I was in England was 1979. I was a young man with a backpack and some uh, waffle stomper boots, and I was traveling uh, on a Eurail or Brit Rail pass, traveling cheaply by train, and I was at a train station early, early one morning before the sun came up. Nobody there but two or three 
older gentleman and myself, and I was waiting to catch a train to go to Portsmouth because I wanted to see the, the uh, HMS Victory, Lord Nelson's flagship. So I'm out there wandering around on the tracks, taking pictures of the sun up and so forth. And an old gentleman came up to me and he said, are you going to Portsmouth? And I said, why, yes, I am. And he said, by walking. And I said, well, no, I'm not going by walking. I'm going by train. So I'm really sorry that you're all muted because I know you're all <laughs> falling out of your chairs at that one. But uh, I've gotten a lot of miles out of that joke, whether people like it or not. Uh, this is the Picture Postcard Annual. It is published every year by Brian and Mary Lund in Nottingham. And if you haven't subscribed to that or you don't buy it each year, I, I highly suggest it. They will tell you not only stories and articles about postcards and postcard collecting, but it has ads and information in there about every fair and every auction in England. And it's, it's a wonderful uh, publication. Um, and I, I, I highly uh, recommend it to all of you if you're not already familiar with it. Rose and Jim and Debbie and I took the train about 45 minutes down to Woking. And the building on the left is their leisure center. And that's where they have the show. You walk in, you're on the second floor of a gym and you're looking down. The dealers are down there still setting up for the show. Just and, like it's in a gym, like just in like Wichita right. is in a gym. Great place for show, well lit, lots of space. And there we are still upstairs looking down at the show. They're still and, setting up down there. Go ahead. And, and if you look to the right through one of those um, meshes, you can see a man in a blue suit jacket that is ron from holland center right yeah thank you um and that uh was sort of a surprise to see another person that we knew making our world a little smaller or connected he's a dealer that many of you know he's a wonderful guy he he comes here uh from the netherlands uh, comes to the states and to england and buys and sells and has for many years and he was set up at the show so that was fun. We got to visit with him. So that's a lot the, of people waiting. Yep. People waiting to get in, which is always, always a good yeah. sign. And there's the show after it was uh, more open and going. It was never real crowded, but they had a lot of room. And uh, I think they were all selling all right. And we had a good time buying. Uh, uh, I found you know, a good number of things that I needed. And uh, I never talked to Jim Mayer very much about what he bought because I don't understand it, uh, to tell you the <laughs> truth. Although I do know if I have a postmark I can't read or a cancellation that doesn't make sense, I can get a hold of Jim and he goes, oh yeah, that's, and he explains it to me. He and, also, by the way, oh, uh, if you look him up online, it's Jim Mayer, M-E-H-R-E-R. And he sells all sorts of things for the postal history collector in terms of research books and uh, supplies and all of that sort of thing. And Rose and I found a table way in the back that did have chairs. And we sat there for, I don't know how long, going through cards that were 50p and having a ball, a ball, just sitting there and laughing. Um, so in that respect, it was a lot like our shows, um, but the chairs, of course, were far and few between, but we found them. All right, now we're going to show you a few of the postcards that we got there. The one on the left is one that I bought. It's a printed card, but it was so well printed, so sharp and clear that I thought it was a real photo until I turned it over and looked at the back. Uh, but it's, it's just, a, I think it's a beautiful card uh, advertising the fourth National Apple Show in Spokane, Washington in 1911. And uh, I, I think it's a nice piece of history and artistically it's just so well done. I was very pleased to find that. And I'm debating whether I'll put it in my sales stock or I'll keep it for a while. And the woman is one of the cards I got. Um, I collect... Um, 
postcard, real photo postcards of women draped in flags, the American flag mainly. And um, she was, it's an obviously a British card, but um, it always amazed me that women were so patriotic before they had the right to vote. So I collect um, mostly women with vintage, you know, vintage women with uh, the flag. All right, these are two cards I got. Uh, I found these filed under social history. These are breaker boys, also known as slate pickers. Uh, these are at uh, a uh, coal mill in, in uh, Pennsylvania. And it, it, it was child labor back in the day. These would have been just after the turn of the century. And many of you are familiar with this, but these young boys were hired to sit. And as the coal came out of the crusher where it was crushed into usable sized chunks, it came down these chutes and they would sit there uncomfortably. You can see they don't have them a very good, they got them a bench that they can hardly manage and they pick out slate or other impurities, other things that are not coal by hand as the stuff comes by them. And it was a terrible job. They're breathing coal dust all day long. They're beating their fingers up. Some of the boys that work in, these, in this mill and in the mines would be uh, uh, injured, badly injured. They had no insurance. They had long hours. Uh, there is a gentleman standing on the right hand side. Now for me, he's sort of behind everybody's pic our, our <laughs> viewer pictures over there, but he's, yeah. yeah. And he's over there and frequently in the photographs of these boys work and uh, that overseer will be, uh, will be holding a stick because he keeps these guys working. Uh, and on the left, we see the people that worked in that plant, the men and the breaker boys at a lunch break. So uh, it's, uh, it's happy to see that they did get out in the fresh air for a little bit. This is just a colorful postcard that I liked. I didn't know anything about it. It's a British card. Those are matchbook uh, labels I, I, or matchbox labels. Uh, and it was just so colorful and so interesting. Uh, never seen anything like it. Uh, I, I, I haven't done any research on it, but I just thought, boy, that's a beautiful card. I would, uh, if I had any more wall space, I might hang that up on the wall for a while. And this was one of my cards. Um, I, besides women with flags, I like well, men, women in general doing some different things. She looked like she was, um, I use them for reference in my drawing and my artwork, making etchings. And she just looked like she was giving some sort of, I'm sure, um, or will be in my story, some suffrage promotion and talking to the ladies at lunch and or as it's been mentioned, it could be Agatha Christie, you know, giving a talk. <laughs> but well, at any rate, um, I got her for reference um, and I love the, the hats and just the whole idea of teas or meetings. I like that kind of card too. And, and uh, the, the, the sort of real photos that put you in a different time and place than where we live in our lives and you can look at it, uh, Alan uh, Milbrandt said to me, you know, you can just imagine all sorts of stories from there. Right. You can take a off a very from that, genteel but, uh, time. And this was another card I found. Um, this area that these women are in is called Angel. It's outside of uh, London and it's in Inslington. And well, Islington is now part of London proper, but it right. wasn't. Uh, and there was a hotel there that was called the Angel. And then the area became the called the Angel. And these women were probably flower um, sellers. Was, yeah. And um, which was a very popular thing to do at the time. Uh, I've seen versions of this in, in searching. Uh, we we did a little internet search, try to figure out who this was and the history of it. There's a whole history of that area and that inn 
and flower sellers, and it's very interesting, but you also see colored versions of this card that are also very, very attractive. And flower sellers, there were quite a few of them. And so there was a lot of competition for the space where the flower sellers were, and it got kind of cutthroat, and um, there was poisonings and all kinds of different things happening <laughs> with these. Uh, women in their space that they were fighting for on the street. Just a card that I picked up. It's a, it's a common uh, uh, Atlantic City postcard, not a particularly great card, but interesting. But apparently the GAR, the Grand Army of the Republic, the Union soldiers, uh, for their uh, encampment, um, they picked up these cards and had them overprinted with their logo and the information about their 1910 encampment in Atlantic City. Uh, so it's just a nice little piece of uh, Civil War memorabilia and uh, Atlantic City, a nice piece of American history. It was a very cheap card over there and that one will go into my sales stock. It won't be a lot of money, but it'll be a, a slight profit. Uh, this is one I bought. I had to have this card as soon as I saw it. If you, um, uh, I hope y'all can read the the uh, thing down there. It's behind my dock, but uh, it says on the left there, it says, train to amuse Miss Maud Ingram, converted actress, dancer, and trapeze artiste saved to serve. So, there she was, she had been an entertainer and a trapeze artist and so forth. And they saved her for the Salvation Army or some equivalent thereof. And you can see how much happier she was. In fact, <laughs> she doesn't look happy either place. And to me, it's just a hilarious piece of British history or Amer uh, human history. This was a card that we put on the announcement for this talk. And uh, nobody quite understands it. Um, the two animals, I think, are crocodiles instead of alligators because they have a rounded snout as opposed to a more pointed snout. Um, but the two gentlemen, it's like, is that their real hair? Is that their real eyebrows and beards and mutton chops? It looks, it looks fake, but what are they doing? Is it a joke? We assume the animals are live because they have these cloths on their lap. Um, In researching, I found quite a few photographs of this, well, not th them, but uh, people with alligators or crocodiles on leashes or larger ones they were sitting on them. In England. Yeah, in that. England, it was sort of a trend alligators were for amusement and um, an oddity. And I think that's what kind of is going on in that they're just part of the trend. So they I don't trending. know if they were set up for a joke. If anybody has any clues about that, uh, you know, we'd love to hear about it. Uh, but it was just too funny to pass up and uh, just a nice real photo mystery card. Uh, I said uh, when uh, Alan and Hal and I were looking at these earlier, I said, well, these two sort of speak for themselves. And Alan said, good. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah, I think they do. I, I love the uh, satisfied smile on the woman's face. She's finally got her uh, a fireman hero have saved her life, you know, and uh, the other guy just uh, he's a happy camper. <laughs> all right there we are coming back from the uh, woking show we're back uh on the tube going to waterloo station and uh waterloo station there on the left has a you know huge long history in, and it's it's just a very interesting place and when jim said that we we're going to meet to go to woking he said meet us at waterloo under the big clock and I thought, well, okay, I guess we'll see a big clock. Well, of course, you can't miss the big clock. And it looks like everybody meets there. That's the meeting place. People ask us what our favorite food was in London. And Debbie might have a different answer for me. 
it's a pasty at Waterloo Station or other little kiosks and so forth. Uh, those were traditionally a, a, a lunch meal for people that worked in the mines or whatever they were made at home. It was sort of a version of a sandwich that they could pack and take with them. Yeah, and uh, they're, it's a handheld food. And that to me was as good as any restaurant meal. I preferred the giant cheese and onion and uh, I was very, very happy with it. And if you notice in the sign in the back, I am now the mayor of London, which was a surprise. Jim Mayer had done a ton of research before this trip, and he had a whole itinerary of things we should do and places we should go, and he knew everything about the, the postcard fair and so forth, but he wanted to go to this little museum one evening after we had done something else. Well, we ended up coming out of the tube and walking, um, you know, it, two it, miles. It depends on who you ask two how long it was. Miles. It was a half Wasn't a mile to two miles somewhere. Rose but Rose. out into this sort of almost empty neighborhood, there were very few other businesses or no restaurants or cafes, few people on the sidewalk. And Jim knew where we were going though, and we just kept going until we got to the Victor Wind Museum of Curiosity, Fine Art and Natural History. It is also a pub called the Last Tuesday Society. So there's Jim and Rose going in and I'm sort of going, well, should I follow? I guess, you know. But Victor Wind, uh, before we get to the next picture, which shows some of the interior, Victor Wind is a real person. He's probably middle-aged, he has a wife, he has children, but he's been collecting weird things his entire life since childhood. And he can now have his own little museum. It is in the basement of this pub, a tiny little mm -hmm. crowded basement he had full to of walk old, down. Go ahead. I'm old sorry. dusty showcases and so forth, full of all of his weird, weird collections. Weird. You, can, you can look it up on the internet. There's a lot of stuff about him. Victor Wind, W-I-N-D. You go down a spiral staircase into this basement that's filled with creepy stuff. There's a Creepy. sample of what's down there. And it doesn't really do it justice. The, no. It's not very big, but there's a ton of stuff in there, little skeletons and all sorts of things. Yeah, he created creatures or somebody did of uh, combining skeletons together. And there just was a display that was different than anything we've ever seen. Uh, there was a jar there was a jar of used condoms from the Rolling Stones that they collected from a hotel. So it was just a, a variety, a variety of things. Sorry, Hal. <laughs> anyway, uh, at least that's what different. at least that's what Victor Wynn right. claimed. Right, right. He also is in the market. If if any of you have a two headed snake or something like that, he's in the market. Right. Okay, we took, uh, uh, I've forgotten, I think it was Jim and Rose wanted to go to Brighton Beach. So we, and I'd heard a lot about it. And of course, there's many, many postcards from Brighton Beach. And so we took a detour and uh, took another train, went down there and we walked up and down Brighton Beach. It was very interesting. Uh, we saw the uh, Helter Skelter amusement ride and so forth. There's a lot of things there that you have seen on postcards. But we met this artist who set up, sets up on the boardwalk there. He has his own little gallery. His name is Ant Fox. I assume his name is Anthony. Well, he paints and he also does digital art and he does combinations of the two. These are some of his, they're, like I said, they're combinations of painting and digital collages. But he made postcards of them. So you've got Lord Byron over here with his iPad. You've got Mary Queen of Scots in the middle having a Bloody Mary. And you've got Her Majesty the Queen dressed up as a stormtrooper. So these are some of his paintings and they all seem to be along that genre, but he makes postcards from them. And we ran across a type of postcard that I would be willing to bet none of you have ever seen before. 
These are two of Ant Fox's postcards. Well, you can see he's poking fun. Here you've got uh, uh, Marie, Antoinette. Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake and she's having some cake. And the girl with the pearl earring has blown a big bubblegum bubble. So that's okay, it's pretty funny. And he does these in full size paintings, but he also does postcards of them. And then if you talk to him, he'll tell you on the back of these postcards, it gives you a link to an app for your phone. If you put this app on your phone, then you hold your phone up in front of the postcard and look through your phone as if you were photographing the postcard with that app and next slide will show you what we what you see. It starts to move. So that's what you see through your phone when you're looking at his postcard if you have that app on your phone. Next, please. I'm not next slide, but the bubblegum. Yeah, there we go. Now I wish we everybody wasn't <laughs> muted because I hope you're laughing or ooing or eyeing, but I'm I was still just watching. Like, Whoa, a new kind of postcard. Uh, and there's not much new in the postcard world. So but this and there's us, Ant yeah. working. He has a website. Uh, uh, It'll if be you, in the if chat. you Google, uh, it's antfox.com and he's a very interesting fellow and he does all sorts of stuff and he'll sell you paintings or postcards or all sorts of things. He was a nice guy. We had a good chat. Now, I can't remember if, uh, but I think I should have asked Jim before this, but I think Jim told us about this next little place to go shop for collectibles and postcards and so forth in England, in London. And if you go to Embankment Station, which is right on the Thames, hence the name Embankment, you can see the bridge over the Thames in the upper right there. If you go to that tube station, the underground, and you come walking out to this side where the flower sellers are, and you turn from this spot, you turn 180 degrees and look in toward London, you see this view. Now, I, I will tell you, I stole that view off of uh, Google, Google uh, Maps. That's why the people's faces are blurred. But if you look over in the corner there, you got a Starbucks, but in the corner is this little blue door tucked into the corner of these buildings. There's a lot enlargement of it on the right. And every Saturday, there is a Charing Cross Collector's Fair there. You go in that door, which is a basically a industrial sort of back door to this building. And it takes you into the car park that's under that office building. You go in there every Saturday morning, they open at seven. Uh, Jim, I, I hope I got that yeah. right that you told us about he this. He did, Jim told us. And you go in and you go down a flight of concrete stairs like you're in a stairwell of a car park and you come into the basement of the car park and all these fellows show up every Saturday at seven o'clock and they sell postcards, stamps, coins, little collectible badges, all sorts of things. Now, the first year we went, it looked like the picture on the left, lots and lots of people. And more recently when we went, uh, it looks a little more like that as- yeah, dwindled. As a lot of uh, shows and fairs have gone, they've kind of gotten less, but it's so amazing. It's so much fun. These guys drive their cars down to the basement floor you can see a couple of vehicles in the very back of the picture on the right. And they open the boots of their vehicles and they set up their tables and they spend their Saturday down there. And if they have customers, fine. If they don't, they're buying and selling and swapping and trading and having a heck of a time. And I would love to be an all retired guy in London. I'd be there every Saturday. That would be so much fun. Anyway, it was great to find that. And I've taken, every time we've gone, I've taken every people time. that aren't collectors there just because I think it's a, it's a wonderful little phenomenon and it's sort of hidden away. It's a secret almost. We had to get there very early, seven o'clock, Jim said, because Portobello Road is all the way across London and it opened at nine. So one of the evenings after one of those uh, tours and walks and so forth, the four of us went to the Mayflower Pub. 
one of the reasons that we took this trip is because Debbie and I have both traced ancestry back to people in England and Debbie can trace her ancestry back to William of Bradford, William Bradford, who sailed on the Mayflower from apparently this location in London on the Thames, although it wasn't called the Mayflower Pub. There's been many, many pubs yeah. there uh, and the building's been redone many times, but it this is called the Mayflower and they, they uh, get by on their connection to the Mayflower. And if you are a descendant of someone who went on the Mayflower, they had a book and um, so Ken told them that I was, and so I got to sign the book. So I'm in the history books as being a descendant of William Bradford. Oh, and one of the reasons that we went there, Jim was, you know, we had been to the Mayflower Pub once before, but Jim was insistent that we go this year because Jim is very like, he's frugal, like our old, old friend, uh, uh, Bill, Bill Peterson. He's frugal. And Jim said they were having fishy Friday. It was two for one fish and chips. So how could we pass it up? So there right. we were at the Mayflower Pub to have two for one fish and chips on fishy Friday. And uh, it looks like Jim is loving on Rose, which he is, but I think we might've had him lean over so we could get that slogan behind him. It's life is like a barber chair. It fits all buttocks. On the left is the back of that pub on the Thames and that's their little wharf dock there. And the people in the pub will say, oh yeah, that's the dock that the Mayflower left from. And of course, things have changed many times, but that's approximately where the Mayflower took off. And that's William Bradford in there. On the, on the Yeah, thank in you. The, in the black hat and uh, in, in the Mayflower, apparently making plans for their voyage. Uh, Alice and I, my sister Alice, who was in the red jacket, we had also traced history uh, and we can trace ourselves almost 100% back to this little church and a little village in Norfolk, England. The village was Little Witchingham. There's almost nothing left of it now except this, the hull of this church, which dates back to the 1500s. There's one gravestone in the floor of the church. Here lieth the body of Thomas Outlaw of Cardiston Gent who died ye 15th of May, 1650. And if we've got our genealogy right, he's a many great, great, great grandfather. Two of his grandsons left that village and came to Norfolk, Virginia in the colonies in 1688. So Alice and I wanted to see that. Uh, the church is abandoned, but there's caretakers and they open it every day and you can just wander in and look around. This is the interior of the church. The paintings on the wall are done in uh, uh, red ochre. And uh, those red ochre paintings have been there at least a couple of hundred years. Nobody knows exactly. But the other colors faded away, but the red ochre, which is a natural pigment, have remained. And that's my sister wandering in the church. Okay, now my sister, we were there and COVID was still going on and we did wear masks sometimes and Alice was a little more uh, careful and cautious than we were. So she thought that place looked old and musty and she wanted her mask. So there she is taking a picture of the, of the tombstone. One of the collectibles we bought at Spitalfields Market on one of our first trips there was this little snuff box and I looked at it and it says, A. Wittard, Postman, Dursley. And I thought, I can find that guy. And sure enough, little internet research after we got home, when we found the postman, that's him on the upper left, Arthur Wittard. And we found their, his descendants in England. And we met Jane English, who is in the green coat in the lower right down there. And we have become good friends with Jane and her family, and we visited them uh, several times, but we never got to visit James, Jane's mother, Sadie, who was the granddaughter of Arthur Withered, because she lived all the way across England from where Jane lived. 
and we were going to go visit, but COVID prevented us from visiting. And this year, we finally got to go visit Sadie. And uh, Jane, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I forgot. You told me that Sadie just had a birthday, but I don't remember. She's either 96 or 97, but she is a spry, wonderful old lady. She's just, she's very entertaining. We got to go meet Sadie. There she is in the lower right. Yeah. She lives on her own. She's very bright. She's very cheerful. She's got a good sense of humor. And she now has possession of the snuff box. We got that back to them some years ago. But this is the first time we got to go to Dursley and see where uh, that part of the family lived and where Arthur Wittard worked. Uh, and there's Jane uh, and her husband Richard with Debbie up there. And I got to give a little talk to the Dursley Historical Society about finding the snuff box and about our connections to England and to the Mayflower and to the people that lived in Little Witchingham and connections across the ocean and uh, connections through little collectibles like snuff boxes. And all the hi historical society came out. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it was, it was a like a post postcard club <laughs> meeting. There were, there were 30 or 40 people there. It was fun. And uh, we brought Sadie some old postcards of Dursley. There it is, nice little village. It's still a wonderful little place on the edge of the Cutswalls. And uh, I thought she'd be excited to see these old postcards, but of course she lives there. She's seen them. She had them, but she has more now. And then on the right is sort of Dursley today. It's a quaint village and uh, it would be really fun to go there and spend more time. Uh, lower middle, Lower middle is Union Street in Dursley, uh, you know, turn of the century, and there it is today on the lower right. Okay, this was just about the end of our trip, and um, we, we've made three trips to England, and we've shopped postcards, and we've done some history things, and museums, and I don't know if we'll get back or not. We hope to, but we wanted to splurge our last night in London, so Debbie and I got uh, a little more expensive hotel room than we normally would have. And that was the view from our hotel window. That's beautiful. Uh, and uh, the Tower Bridge is just for, for locals and tourists and everybody. Uh, it just says London like it's nothing iconic. else. Yep. So we had this great view and we had one more day to just walk up and down the banks of the Thames and look at things. There was our view that oh, night. It was gorgeous. It was fun. It was gorgeous. Now, I, I promised you a few postcards. We'll get back to a postcard here. This is one of my favorite postcards uh, of the Tower Bridge. It is on display in our bathroom now. And if you'd like to come visit, you're welcome. You can, Everyone's welcome. You can see it in the bathroom. Uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a great little postcard, nice soft colors, but, but it gets better. It's a transparency hold a light. I'm very, I'm very happy with that postcard as my souvenir of London. And I was happy we could get one more postcard into this presentation. Now, you remember Andy from Portobello Road? Well, we got to go back and see Andy again, of course, and he happened to have this little uh, tower bridge toy. It's about four or five inches long, maybe five, six inches long, uh, cast metal. The bridges lift up with the little levers and stuff. And I was just, it's like, I want a souvenir. I want a collectible. I want, that's why we collect postcards. We want to acquire stuff. We want to have it. We want to drool smitten. over it. And that was like, that's gotta be the best souvenir I've ever brought home from a trip. And so I got that from Andy, uh, didn't haggle over price. It was 28 pounds and it was worth every penny. Um, and that too is on display in the bathroom at our house. And if you wanna see it or even take it down <laughs> and play with it, you may. Everyone's welcome. I like old toys. I, I don't want a new toy in the box. I want a toy that looks like some kid played with it. And that one's from 1950, 49, 50. 
So there we are on the last day. There's Debbie saying goodbye to the Tower Bridge and the Thames and London. Yeah, uh, several good trips. Good trip. And uh, there are ways to travel over there. With, if, you, if you buy your airline ticket right, there are ways to travel there and go postcard shopping that won't break the bank. And there we go. Yeah. Her Majesty <laughs> says, y'all come back now, you hear? And that's what we say to all of you. Y'all come back. Yeah. You come visit us anytime. And I hope we get to go back to England. But I Me hope too. I hope you enjoyed this uh, travel log presentation. Thank you, Hal. Thanks. And thank Thanks. you, everyone. Thanks for having for us. listening. Thanks to you those bet. of you who are not asleep. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, Bill thank Burke. you very much. It was yeah. lovely. And I happen to have that hold to light. I All thought right. London Bridge, of course. <laughs> Alan, could you unmute Jim Mayer and Rose to see if they have any comments? They have done it. Did that Hell, do it? Thank you. Yeah. Anything wrong or? Uh, no, I, I do take credit for telling you about the Charing Cross Collectors Fair. Thank you so much. We went uh, every year that we went because of you. Thank you. The first time I went, I was there with my sister and she had no interest in any kind of collectible and we had no idea what uh, that place was or anything. So as we were taking the tube to Embankment Station, I said to her, well, what are you going to do? I said, because I don't know how long I'm going to be there. I don't know what's going to be there or anything. And she said, well, I'll look around and see if I can find a Starbucks. <laughs> and uh, Debbie's laughing because as you walk out of Embankment Tube Station, and as you may have seen in the, in the picture that Ken showed, there's the blue sign that, that points the way to the uh, collector's fair in the basement. And then the thing on the right is a Starbucks. So it was right in front of us. Uh, so that's where my sister sat while I went down and shopped for things in the basement. Jim, uh, if, you were, if you were retired and living in London, wouldn't you like to be just sitting down there behind your table every Saturday morning? I don't, can't imagine what else you'd do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, I was I was going to say too that you know the woke the Woking postcard fair is twice a year, and I will be going back in September and go to the oh. one this fall. Um, so there's shows all over the country there. Oh. If you get online and look, there's there's fairs all kinds of places, and they're and they're on Tuesdays on in some places. I mean, they're yeah. just almost any day of the week you can find a postcard fair. Now I don't know to what extent it might just be some guy in his garage or something, but because uh, I've, I've I, I don't know if you could buy enough to make like a trip profitable for a dealer, but you can add one into a vacation and have a great time. Right, right. Well, and this time it's uh, the uh, the big stamp show in London is like the next week. So I'll be going to both of those um, as well as the Charing Cross thing on Saturday morning. And that's all dependent on whether the trains and the tube are on strike on the days that I plan to go to those yeah. things because they've been having these rolling, these planned rolling strikes uh, here this summer so we'll see about that but rose thanks again for going we had a great time yeah. yes i did too i would have to say the best part of my whole trip going to england was meeting you two because you're you're the nicest most warm-hearted funny intelligent people that that there is Oh, oh well, thank you. Thank you we're very smart. much. Uh, everybody <laughs> likes smart, it. Yes. <laughs> Bill Burton, uh, do you have some questions for us? Anything? Actually, Al, this is the first time that we haven't had any direct questions. What we have is lots of applause. Good. Um, good. Oh. And I don't know whether any speakers have really gotten this many. Uh, pieces of applause and thank yous and, and boy, that's great uh, comments. But as it stands now, we don't have any, well, some things have just come up, but this looks like, nope, very nice presentation, says George Ebert. So that's it. That's the sort of thing we've gotten today. Okay. I think we also thank, uh, thank the Wilsons for what they've done. <clears throat>
That's you good because I couldn't tell if the jokes were falling flat. <laughs> no more than usual, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Ken and Debbie, for mentioning that picture postcard annual. And an annual means there's just one issue a year. You can subscribe and get it once a year, but it's a magazine that if you are planning on going to England anytime, try to get the current annual or the last couple or something. Uh, it, because of the information and the, uh, the contacts, the email that are posted in there, the phone numbers that are posted, you can double check, you know, to say, is there really a fair this Saturday or something like that? But I think Jim mentioned that there are e even fairs on Tuesday in the middle of the week. And it's so great to be there and then to take their public transportation. It's very easy. It's very doable. Yes, trains and buses, or they call them coaches. Uh, you know, just it's a lot of fun. And uh, they speak the same language and they have signs that we can read. And I think you, anybody would uh, uh, treasure and enjoy the, the trip. And uh, postcards are a, a big, uh, big draw as well as all of the wonderful museums and, and things to see too. But and thank Cal, you very much. Cal, anybody else have any comments? Well, we really, really do thank you. Uh, Debbie and Ken for this. I think that a trip abroad like that is exciting and fun to hear about. And <clears throat> the postcard aspect is, is really terrific. We uh, uh, thank you, uh, Bill Burton, for helping us with the questions. But we appreciate everybody coming today. And thank you. And uh, any last comments, <laughs> anybody? Yes, thank you all for uh, coming to the meeting and yeah. we'll see many of you in Wichita <clears throat> in October. Thank in October, you. you bet. Thanks for having us, Hal. Oh, thank well, you. Thanks for coming. It was quite interesting. Thank oh, you. Good. It really it's was. Wonderful, thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks again. And we'll see you uh, in September. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.